the sea can be a dangerous place. Even with modern ships and modern technology, disasters can still happen. Collision, fire, and foundering can all lead to abandonment. When human lives are at risk, all seafarers owe it to themselves and their colleagues to understand their responsibilities. This series has been produced to supplement your ship's personal survival manuals, including the SOLAS Chapter 3 training manual and STCW requirements. This video looks at enclosed lifeboats, freefall lifeboats and rescue boats. In totally enclosed lifeboats, the coxswain has a control position. The boat is steered and the safety systems are operated from here. On some cargo ships, these lifeboats need to be lowered to the embarkation deck. But most totally enclosed lifeboats are boarded and launched from the stowed position. With all types of boat, once the crew have been mustered, the bridge is informed. With this lifeboat, the gripes are removed. The lifeboat is then boarded. The bottom plug set and the painter passed out of the forward hatch and secured. As the ship is in port, the harbour pins are removed and the boat is then lowered to the boarding position. Once the order is received, the lifeboat is boarded. Occupants need to be directed to their seats. They must be spread out evenly, starting with positions away from the doors. They must sit down and strap themselves in. As they enter, designated crew members bring with them the satellite EPIRB, the radar transponder, and if there's time, extra water. Once everyone is on board, the doors and hatches are battened down. Life jackets need to be worn by all occupants. The coxswain then straps himself in and starts the engine. This boat is lowered from on board the ship. Many totally enclosed lifeboats are lowered from inside the lifeboat. The coxswain pulls on the self-lowering cable. This cable is pulled down until it can be pulled no further. An automatic brake on the ship controls the maximum speed of descent. The descent can be stopped by completely releasing the tension on the cable. The release mechanisms on these lifeboats can operate both on load, when the hooks are supporting the weight of the lifeboat, and off load, when the lifeboat is in the water and there is no load on the hooks. There are advantages in being able to release the lifeboat both off and on load, especially in bad weather. But all on-load release systems must have built-in safeguards against early release. In this release gear, both falls are connected to pivoted hooks fitted to the lifeboat. The hooks are held in place by a cam that presses against the lower front corner of the hook. When this cam is turned by operating the release handle, 
the hook swings around its pivot. The mechanical arrangements ensure that both cams turn and both hooks swing at the same time, so both falls are released at the same time. There are other systems. One is called the open top cone system. Again, the mechanical arrangements ensure that both falls are released together. Check your lifeboat manuals to see which type is fitted to your lifeboats. A further safeguard is the hydrostatic interlock in the keel. This prevents release until the keel is under water. There is an override mechanism. This must only be activated by the coxswain. In heavy seas, the coxswain should either use the onload release method, stopping descent when the boat is one meter above the water, and then releasing it, or use the offload release method by timing the descent so the boat enters in the trough of a wave. That's release the force, please, everyone. The coxswain pulls out the safety pin. When the lifeboat enters the water, the weight comes off the falls. The coxswain pulls back the release handle. This turns the cams, which release the hooks. The falls disconnect, and the lifeboat is now under its own power and the control of the coxswain. Different lifeboats have different systems. Make sure that you are familiar with the system on your lifeboats. As soon as the engine is running, and the falls have been released, the painter is released. Like other essential operations, this must be possible from inside the lifeboat. If seasick pills haven't been handed out before, the coxswain orders them to be given out now. Good leadership is important in emergencies, and the coxswain must put himself in charge of the evacuees. Steering will be largely done by compass. The buoyancy of totally enclosed lifeboats means that they're not easy to handle. Regular training is vital for their coxswains. Once the lifeboat is in the water, the coxswain should steer to a safe distance from the abandoned ship, taking into account all prevailing circumstances. This is probably upwind and clear of the bow and stern. The occupants of the lifeboat must always stay sitting down and strapped in. These boats are self-righting, but only if everyone is strapped in. The engines are designed so that they will still function should the lifeboat turn over and self-right. Some of these lifeboats are fitted with external sprinkler systems and internal air supplies to protect the boat and its occupants from fire and toxic gases. In a real emergency, once the boat has stopped in a safe position, the EPIRB would be switched on, secured to the survival craft and put in the water. The SART, the radar transponder, would be mounted and switched on. Using the radio on board, the coxswain should help organize the gathering together of all the survival craft. Maintenance is essential to make sure that all the lifeboat systems are fully operational. The stores must also be checked and replaced in line with flag state requirements. Freefall boats are not lowered from davits but descend directly into the water. They are always boarded in the stowed position. An officer prepares the lifeboat for launching by first releasing the chocks that secure the boat in place. The battery charging wire is then disconnected. The officer enters the lifeboat and switches the boat's electrical system to battery power. 
the crew musters in the normal way. But they must enter the lifeboat in an organized way. Space is restricted inside, so some ships are provided with inflatable life jackets. You need to know and follow the procedures on your ship. The steep angle at which they are boarded makes it essential that boarding is carried out calmly. Personnel in the boat must be distributed evenly. On some ships, everyone has a seat allocated to them, so they enter in seat order, those nearer the bow of the lifeboat first. If individual seats are not allocated, then the lifeboat crew will direct people to their seats. Once in their seats, it is essential to strap in properly. You will need to make sure that you're using the right strap for your seat. Many of these lifeboats have head restraints that must be worn. Entering by seat order means that the coxswain, usually the ship's captain, will be one of the last men to enter. He then starts the engine, preheating it for 30 seconds before ignition. Right, everyone secure? If the motor does not start for any reason, the lifeboat can still be used as its speed of descent will take it clear of the ship. The designated person has the task of bringing on board the SART and EPIRB. Sometimes this is the chief officer. Once everyone is on board, the door is shut. When everyone is seated, the coxswain checks the engine. He ensures that everyone is strapped in. He then operates the release handle and launches the lifeboat. Maintenance is important for freefall lifeboats. The rollers on the ramp must be maintained according to the manufacturer's instructions. Passenger ships often carry partially enclosed lifeboats. The types of release gear are similar to those of totally enclosed boats, with onload and offload release possible. Some ships are fitted with extending arm or sliding beam davits. With this system, the first step is to remove the slip hook of the gripes. Then the rest of the securing system is removed. There are many different types. Then the winch operator, in this case also the leader of the party, lowers the lifeboat to the embarkation deck. Bowsing arrangements depend on the davit system. This particular lifeboat is self-bowsing and descends to the position of passenger embarkation. You need to understand the system on your ship. Once at the embarkation deck, the party opens the ship's rails and positions steps that will make it easier for passengers to board the lifeboat. The helmsman opens up the sides, enters and turns the main battery on. With this lifeboat, the external power supply automatically disconnects as it is lowered. Once the lifeboat has swung into the embarkation position, the bowsing gear is released. Then the passengers are embarked. The first passengers are placed furthest from the entrance and they are directed to their places by the crew to get an even load. The wide side openings allow rapid evacuation of passengers. In passenger ship operations, there will usually be a lifeboat party who will lower the lifeboat. Once the order has been given, the boat is lowered, in this case by the winchman, although the boat can be lowered from inside. In training, the coxswain must release the hooks from inside the boat 
as this is the way it will need to be done in a real emergency. Under the SOLAS regulations, most ships have to carry a designated rescue boat. This can be a specially equipped lifeboat. Whatever type it is, it must be capable of being launched within five minutes and being recovered safely and quickly. A rescue boat has a crew of at least three. They must all be dressed in anti-exposure suits or immersion suits of the correct size. There are two types, with and without insulation. Your ship will be equipped with the type that you need. Rescue boat crews must practice getting into their suits so that they can do so quickly when required. Insulated immersion suits are more bulky but are essential in very cold waters. Some insulated suits do not require the wearer to have a life jacket. For the suit to work effectively, it must be done up completely around the face. Immersion suits incorporate a rescue loop around the waist. This is used to pull the wearer alongside. This loop must not be used to winch the wearer into a helicopter. The non-insulated suits are much thinner and are for use in warmer waters. In addition to this protection for three crew, occupants of open lifeboats will have TPAs, thermal protective aids. Each type is different, so be sure to read the instructions first. You get into them fully dressed, wearing a life jacket. TPAs reduce the loss of body heat and so protect the wearer against hypothermia. In life rafts, as well as enclosed and partially enclosed lifeboats, there must be TPAs for 10% of the occupants, with a minimum of two. These should be used for anyone rescued from the sea. The TPA must cover the whole body except the face. Rescue boats must carry at least two TPAs for survivors. For rescue boat crews, frequent exercises are essential to ensure a rapid response in the rare event of a man overboard. In this exercise, once the rescue boat is ready, the bridge is notified. When the bridge gives the go-ahead, the officer on deck gives the order to launch. In a real emergency, immersion suits must always be fully zipped up. During the descent, the crew must stay sitting down. These boats are fitted with a release mechanism capable of both offload and onload release. Some are fitted with mechanisms similar to that seen earlier on the totally enclosed lifeboat. However, many administrations allow the use of a single hook attached to the fall, provided that it has multiple safety checks built into its operation. This rescue boat is fitted with such a system. In this exercise, the crew wait until the boat is in the water and use the offload release. It is safe to do this in these calm conditions. But if it is rough, it may be safer to operate the onload release with the boat just above the water. Once in the water, the fall goes slack and the hook releases automatically. The cable falls away and when the painter is released, the boat is free. Always watch out for the swinging fall block. When making a recovery, the rescue boat should first make an approach at a safe distance to get into the right position and to show that help is at hand. The casualty is then approached with the wind at about 45 degrees on the bow. The two crew members go forward 
as the boat comes up on the leeward side of the casualty. This direction of approach avoids the danger of the rescue boat, with its greater leeway, being blown onto the person in the water. The two crew members get hold of the casualty, turning him if necessary, so that his head points towards the stern of the rescue boat. They then pull him into the boat so that his feet are pointing forward. In cold waters, it is very likely that the casualty will be very cold. They should be put into a TPA as soon as possible. Once the boat makes way, the bow will rise and the casualty's feet will then be above the head, the correct position for first aid. In rigid rescue boats, it may be necessary to use a boarding net or other method to rescue a person from the water. The next stage is the recovery of the rescue boat with its crew and casualty. This is not too difficult when the ship is stopped. If a sea is running, the master will navigate the ship to help the rescue boat. However, connecting the boat to the fall in a seaway is never an easy task. It is important to maintain regularly all the ship's emergency life-saving equipment, especially the release mechanisms. The stores, particularly the pyrotechnics, should be checked to ensure that they're up to date. Participate fully in all emergency exercises. Read all available manuals. Take advantage of all emergency response courses. Watch this series of programs again. Make sure that you know what to do in case of an emergency. Your own life, as well as the lives of everyone on board, may depend on it. Many of the survival techniques for life rafts and lifeboats are dealt with in the fourth program in this series.